Well, speaking of burning it down, uh, next up, I want to talk about this story where this professor at a public college bound by the First Amendment says he was fired for teaching basic biology that your chromosomes determine your sex. Take a look at this news clip. Now, Doctor, you were an adjunct professor down in Texas and a longtime adjunct professor, 20 years. Uh, you lost your position, and this is a very complicated and, and interesting case. Tell us what happened in November that led to this dismissal. Yeah, I, I've been uh, teaching at uh, St. Philip's College, which is one of the community colleges in San Antonio since 2003, four, and uh, till uh, fall of 2022. And uh, in January of this month, uh, sorry, January of this year, on the 12th of January, I received an email from the vice president of the department um, of the school that uh, they are doing an ethic violation investigation on me. So I responded to his email and asked him, what are the complaints? And, uh, you know, just give me more info about it. So what he said was, uh, the human resources will contact me. Nobody contacted me from human resources. And on January 27th, which is like a two weeks after the first email, I received another email uh, with a letter of termination. Now, this, did you know at that point what some of these complaints were centered no, around? No, I the first email, no, I have no clue. I never knew what was coming up. Now in November, and correct me if I'm wrong, you you had been teaching and you talked about, um, you know, that sex is determined by chromosomes X and Y, you know, very basic sort of biological truths. You were teaching that and a couple of students walked out of the room. Um, is that true? And if that's true, yes. is that the root yeah. of this? Yeah, let me just uh, clarify that point because when I got the letter of termination, uh, what the VP mentioned was that uh, uh, some of the complaints were offensive to the homosexuals and transgender. So I presume and I assume that uh, very possible it is based on human reproductive system, which I thought which I taught, which was in November. You know, when I start a semester, I teach human re reproductive system towards the end of that semester, which is November first. I don't exactly remember, but I think it towards the end of uh, November. What I taught is just biology for the last same thing I taught for the last twenty years. So I don't know what happened. Yeah, that is true. When I taught this class, uh, four of my students just walked out. All right, uh, that, that, a lot going on there. Your thoughts? There's a lot going on, but the one thing I wanna highlight, especially in this article, is how it says it's discriminatory to homosexuals to teach basic biology XXXY. And I wanna, I, maybe I should reach out to, to this school and let them know that I am attracted to men, biological men, there's no separation between, you know, gender and sex. That's what makes me gay. But it's interesting how when you say gender's on a spectrum, somehow gay people automatically get lumped in and it's now discriminatory towards us. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What's actually discriminatory is telling people that, you know, being gay doesn't actually exist because gender is a spectrum. You're not attracted to men. You're attracted to whatever this concoction of a man is. So I just thought it was really interesting how as I'm reading this, which should be an issue about, you know, trans issues, it, somehow being gay is brought up. Yeah, it is crazy to me. And I guess we have to proceed on the assumption that the professor's side of the story is the truth because we don't have right. the other side of the story yet. But if we accept the professor's side of the story as the facts here, then first off, even if he did say something offensive, it is a free speech issue that professors have academic freedom rights, including to say something offensive. But simply saying things like, there are two sexes, they are determined by your chromosomes, uh, men and women 
males and females must join together to reproduce. Like, how are we reaching a point where that's something that people will walk out of your class over? I mean, are these people just like out of touch with reality? It's it, it blows my mind that the trust the science crowd is completely denying science as a whole now. And it, it's permeating every single institution, this ideology. It's like a virus and it's really worrisome because, you know, if it doesn't somehow you get brought back to reality, at least in the scientific field, what it, like what is that going to mean for our country and our world 10 years from now? So it's stuff like this, you know, there's the trending news headlines that we can talk about, but it's things like this that people really need to start paying attention to, especially in the field of like medicine and science, because this is what's going to shape the world 10 years from now. And if it goes, if it keeps going down this path, it's not looking good. It's right. I agree with you. It's one thing when like wokeness infects the liberal arts departments, your right. poetry department, whatever. It's a whole nother thing when wokeness infects your medical schools. And it is. I can tell you, I've read articles. I have some uh, inside experience from people I know about like pretty anti-science ideology making its creep into medicine and into science and into even things like coding. And that's really <laughs> disturbing to me because these should be as rational and objective fields as you can get. But instead, the emotional, like ideological uh, worldview is creeping even into those and to the point where apparently now a professor can get in trouble for saying there are two biological, which is funny because even, you know, some of my trans transgender or transsexual friends like Blair White would acknowledge that, right? They would say like, yes, that's the truth. And I'm, you know, that doesn't conflict with who I am. Well, yeah, in order to have gender dysphoria, there has to be two genders that you're dysphoric about. You're dysphoric right. about the other one. So it's it's actually antithetical to being transgender by saying that there are not two genders, because then what do I have gender dysphoria about? I'm just me. But it you know, it's I had a conversation with a doctor who is like pro affirmative care and he sent me all of these resources of his learning. And I have respect for him, even though we completely disagree. But it's interesting that one part of it says that that's a part of this affirmative care model is completely affirming that if somebody says it's their gender, that you have to say, yes, that is you. You were born in the wrong body. And that is a spiritual argument because you can't be born in the wrong body unless you like believe that there is in somehow an essence of a soul that should have been born in another one. And that's already in medicine. So it's a spirit. It's honestly a religion at this point that's infecting every single aspect of our society. And I would say the same thing if Christianity started going into the field of medicine. It should be completely objective and based in reality. Yeah, the whole idea that you must affirm whatever you're told by an impressionable young person seems nuts to me because right. teenagers change their minds about things all the time. 11 and 12 year olds will tell us things. In no other arena would we say we must accept whatever they're told. But I do want to go back to this story and talk about one other aspect of it. So on one part, it's a free speech thing. They're punishing this guy for, uh, he says, just teaching basic biology. But the second part that was disturbing to me was actually a due process question because they didn't even tell him what he was accused of. He had no opportunity mm -hmm. to confront his accusers or prevent present evidence in his defense. And he was just he received that he was being investigated they wouldn't answer questions about it and then he gets a termination letter boom that's like kind of a kangaroo court system that you can just lose your job for offending the the pre precepts of wokeness and you don't even get a chance to defend yourself well leftists don't believe in due process because due process involves examining arguments and the minute you bring you know an examining someone's to the, truth right then they automatically lose like how are, what are they going to defend a, a spiritual belief when you're like well x x and x y this is why they don't debate they cancel they they shut you down they they compl they don't believe in free speech because if they did it would be embarrassing for them so i it's so funny you and this is a little bit of tangent but it's really funny that you just make that point because I made a TikTok yesterday responding to a young black woman who was saying that in capitalism, uh, they want the non-white people to die. And I think that's... Okay. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I think that's absurd. I think actually in capitalism, they want your money if you're a non-white person. <laughs> they want you as consumers or customers. And so I respond to this. And on TikTok, all the comments 
are not like making a counter argument, but they're saying not a white man thinking he can question <laughs> the truth of a woman of color or not, not a white man trying to mansplain the uh, experiences of people of color. It's like there almost is this religious aspect to it where you're not allowed to by virtue of who you are or, or someone's truth being perceived as somehow off, off limits. It's like you're not even allowed to make an argument and they don't have to make an argument. They just win because they are the right box, I guess. Well, I mean, it's identity politics. That's the whole purpose of it. it there's a quote from Margaret Thatcher where I'm, I'm going to say it wrong, but essentially once they start attacking you personally, they don't have a single argument left. And that is the whole premise of identity politics. If you're white, if you're straight, if you are a man, it's like mansplaining. Oh, a straight man, you don't understand. And to me, you know, I used to get so mad at it because I'm like, why, why, why can't you just have a discussion? But now I'm just like, oh, you can't have a discussion because you literally can't defend your beliefs. It's telling. It's like it shouldn't be that hard to make an actual argument, but they don't. Right. right.